follows. <laughs> and none other than bringing you the word this first Sunday in November is our very own Pastor Cynthia Shores. Great. Amen. Amen. Have a stronghold. 
And, and you're in that game sometimes of guilt and sometimes it's hurt, it's frustration, it's disappointment. And then sometimes after all of that, then we get depressed. And then our depression, sometimes we get angry and hostile. And when people come to you, you're so mean, they say, uh, maybe I should not do this. All of these things come, but I want you to know today that you can't give up now. Amen. You can't give up now. If you think about it, God has brought you from such a silent yes. yes. If you think back over your life how you used to be, yes. and now you think where you are today, as Sister, as Sister uh, Karen said, you know, I might not be where I, I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. And I'm working on getting to where I need to be. So you have to continue working. You can't let stuff just affect you to the yeah. point that it will just paralyze you. Sometimes we do stuff to ourselves. That's right. And sometimes things happen to us just because somebody else did something and you're just so close to the impact zone that you are affected. Yeah. You can be in an accident and not cause the accident. Right. Yeah, but right. because you were close to the vicinity of the accident, some things have happened to you Amen. if you're close enough. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Like if I get another car and then they hit your car. Yeah. Mm. You were just minding your own business. You were in the wrong. But because you were in the proximity yeah. of somebody else, sometimes you feel the effect That's right. of what's going on. Yeah. Whether you fall off a cliff or you get pushed off the cliff, when you end up on the ground, you're going to have the same bruises, the same lacerations, cuts. You're going to have the same brokenness. You're going to still need to heal. Either way, amen? amen. Yeah. And so we have to realize that, that things happen to us, but you don't have to stay where you are. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I looked at this, this, this scripture and I was thinking about the, the comparisons of Isaac, who was Abraham and Sarah's son. Amen? Amen. amen. And the first recorded family in the land, in the Bible, was recorded in Abraham's day. Yes. Amen? Yes. The second family was recorded in Isaac's day. And so Isaac decided to get away from the effects of the famine. He decided he was going to go to Egypt and ride it out. Okay? And sometimes that's what we try to do too. We try to run away from our trouble. Amen. We got pressure. We got things happening. We decide, you know, it's time for me to just move up, just, just get, I just need to leave. Amen? Amen. And that was Isaac's idea. Isaac says, I'm going to go to Egypt, and when I get to Egypt, everything's going to be all right. When everything gets better, I'll come back. But in this Genesis 26, the second verse, down to the fifth verse, it says, And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So the same covenant that God made with Abraham, he made that same covenant with Isaac. Now, at that point, Isaac has exactly what I keep telling you all the time. Isaac had a choice. Isaac could choose to go to Egypt, or he could choose to stay where God told him to stay. Amen? Amen. You know, sometimes we have our own plan. 
We plan and then we work out plan. Mm -hmm. What is it going to take me? You know, you set these, you have a big goal, but you have little goals that you're going to do to accomplish that big goal. You can't just get to the big goal. Amen. You got some steps along the way. Amen? Amen. And so Isaac had his plan together. But I want you to know that sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes your plan for you is not God's plan for you. And so you have to realize today that the safest place in the world to be is in the will of Christ. Yes. And so whatever his plan for me is, I need to adjust me to fit in his plan. Because see, I get out there with my plan and things aren't going to work like they should or like I think they should and things are going to start to get rough and, and then I'm going to be scratching my head trying to figure out what happened. But he said, if you do this, I'll do that. If you do this, if you stay where I tell you to stay, I'm going to bless you. Hallelujah. So Isaac, like his daddy, decided he was going to listen to God. I also found it kind of interesting that Isaac lied the same lie his daddy lied. <laughs> Y'all remember when Abraham, he said that Sarah was his sister? Yes, yes. Because he felt like people were going to kill him and take Sarah? Well, Isaac's wife was Rebecca, and Rebecca was fine. She was good looking. And so Isaac said, oh no, she's not my wife, she's my sister. And the people accepted her as his sister. You know you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. The Bible says that the king happened to be looking out the window. You know, you know, sometimes when you when, when you tell a lie, you get comfortable. And you forgot your lie. And then <laughs> you let your guard down. And just as soon as you let your guard down, somebody gonna see you. That's what happened to Isaac and Rebecca. Isaac and Rebecca, they in love. That's my husband, that's my wife. And you know how couples play together sometimes a little bit more intimate than brother and sister? The key saw Isaac and Rebecca playing around. <laughs> and the king said, come here, Isaac. That woman is not your sister. <laughs> I've seen a lot of things. I know a lot of things. That ain't no sister relationship that I just saw. Isaac said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> she my wife. He said, man, why are you lying to us? Because one of our men could have had, had, had your woman and then they would have committed a great sin because you done lied and said that she's not you, your wife, she's your sister, and then if they take her, then, you know, we're in the wrong. <laughs> a lie is a lie. <laughs> a lie is a lie. <laughs> And so then, I said, well, you know, I thought, I really man, king, see what happened was, I thought y'all were going to kill me and take my wife. So I, I, I just figured that I would be safer saying that she my sister. But you know what? God still has a plan. Yes. Even when you're wrong, yeah. he still has a plan for you. <laughs> and so, God put it on the king's heart to tell all the people, don't hurt Isaac and don't hurt Rebecca. Keep your hands off of them. <laughs> because if you do, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> so guess what? 
Even though the Philistines did not like them, there were foreigners in their country. As far as they were concerned, there was a, a hands off. Amen. Why? Because God said, I'm going to bless you. You stay there, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless your children. Amen. Isn't it great that God, that, that, that you have that generational blessing? Yeah. Isaac was experiencing the generational blessings from his father Abraham. That now is going to be passed to Isaac's children. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And so, when you think about things, uh, 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 let me say this. After, after Isaac stayed, he became a farmer. Farmer by trade. And the Bible says that when he planted something, he didn't get like tenfold, twentyfold. 50-fold. He got a hundred-fold. He put in a dollar, he get a hundred dollars. Every dollar. How many of us want that deal? Amen. I give you a dollar, you give me a hundred back. Let me give you a whole lot of dollars. Amen. Amen. Look, I Wells. 
And as I said, people will plot your demise behind your back. Mm -hmm. And when they do it, you can do one or two things. When they try to destroy you, you just go ahead and grab a flower, lay down on your back, put the flower on your chest, and say, I'm just going to stand and wait to die. So. They, done, they done closed them away. Amen. It was, they shouldn't have messed with my men. My animals wasn't doing a thing to them. They, they, they knew I needed water and they filled in my wells. Well, I guess that's it, God. I'm, I, I'm just true. Y'all go ahead and throw the dirt over me because, you know. <laughs> Or you can say not today, Doug. Not today. Not today. Not today. Cause see, I realize that God gave me a promise. Right. And no matter what you say, right. it's what God says. Amen. Right? Come on, come on. You don't have a heaven. Yes. 
reaction to it. And so when the wind, when the wind blow, I'm fine. Thank you, Lord. If I'm going through a dry season, yes. everything around me is drying up. Yes. I'm connected. Amen. I've got the living boy. Yes. Ah, uh, remember when when Jesus was uh, saw, met the woman at the well? At the well, mm -hmm. and he said, "You don't even know who you're talking to." Come on. Yes. 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 He said, "Yes, Lord, the water that I have." Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you only need it one time. That's right. yeah. You'll never get thirsty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I said in Jeremiah 17 and 13, the ending of the verse uh, describes God as the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Lamentations 3 21 through 24 says, This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Mm -hmm. And what this means is, I thought about this thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, you, 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 you got to recall some right. stuff. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. It says, yes. this yes. I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is the Lord's mercy yes. that we are not to sin. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Yes. Great is thy faithfulness. Yes. The Lord is my portion, mm. saith my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. What does that mean? He's my point. He's my lot. Anything that I need, yes. it's in him. Yes, sir. Yes. Whether I need a little bit or a lot. All right. Yeah. Whether I, I, I need a little dab of do you yeah. or a whole trunk load. Yeah. He is my point. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. See, see you, you, you got to who would not serve a God like this? Amen. 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 But I cannot, can, I cannot surrender to my circumstances. That's the thing. Don't surrender. In Isaac's case, the Philistines had filled in his well. Mm. And he had to redig to get back to the water. Mm. There's another example I want to use today. Which is the opposite. And I got this. This is an original from me. I'm going to tell you right now. It came from the Williams brothers. Anybody know who the Williams brothers is? No, it's a song. It's a song. And, 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 and the song that the Williams brothers sang, it told a story about a goat. Uh -huh. There was a farmer, and he had this old goat. And this goat was his pet, and they were buddies, and he took that old goat everywhere he went, that goat followed him along. Like Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> well, this old farmer had a goat. And that goat went everywhere the farmer went. But one day the farmer was going into town, and he tied the goat in the backyard, and he went on about his business, and he came home later that evening, and looked out there in the backyard, and the goat was gone. He went, well, where is the goat? Looking around, and after a while, he heard that. <laughs> and then the farmer remembered he had an old well. Dug well in the backyard. That goat was busy eating and forgot the goat. The well was there and fell in the well. So the farmer peeked in the well and he looked at the goat. He said, Oh, man, what you doing down there? <laughs> This well has been here all these years. Why are you at the bottom of the well? So he goes to the barn and he gets the rope and he tries everything he can to get the rope, hook it around the goat's neck, and every time he thinks he got it, it falls. And he kept on trying and it failed. And after a while, he said, I can't get you out. I done tried. You shouldn't have failed in the well. <laughs> And, I, and I'm not going, I'm too old to go down in there. I, if I get down in there, I can't carry you out because I can't get out. So, well, I guess I'll at least bury it. And so he went back to the barn and he got the shovel and he came and he started throwing dirt, 
into the well. Go bury the goat. The goat said, I don't know what you do. But this ain't my day to die. <laughs> The goat probably quoted Psalms 118 and 17. It says, I shall, I shall not die, right. but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. So as the farmer would throw the dirt into the well, on top of the goat, the goat would yeah. shake it off. Shake it off. Yeah. Shake it off. Yeah. And then he pack it <laughs> under his feet. <laughs> Aren't you glad <laughs> that you don't have to have to depend on people? <laughs> because some of the people that's closer to you <laughs> that you done run with, yeah. ate with, slept beside, kept company, yeah. you get a little bit too much for them, mm -hmm. and they say, Well, you <laughs> just well go ahead and kill y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I got other things to do. I, I can't be bothered with this. It's your fault you went in the well. You can't figure it out, I can't figure it out, so I'm just going to cut you loose. But the goat said not. There you go. Not that day. Not so the, 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 the fire was broke. A shovel full of it. Yeah. There's some shaking going on. There was some packing going on. And then the farmer said, well, he ought to be buried by now. <laughs> and he had not even buried. So he kept on packing it in. And I, you know, and I would, and if I could interpret what the sheep, what the goat was saying. The goat says, I just can't give up now. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. I don't believe you brought me this far to leave me.